All right, so um, if we covered the importance of boards for organization, well, then we need to cover creating the actual pins. Uh, there are several ways to do it. One is uploading a pin. We'll do that one first. So I'll mark, I'll mark the different ways here how to create a pin. We'll check out each one. Uh, so how to create pins, upload a picture. That's easy. We've also got instead uh, use a picture from your website. So the link. So we can use a link. You've got a picture on your website. I've got a I've got a recipe on my website. I want to add it to Pinterest. Well, I would need the link to the picture, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Then we've also got, you might have noticed, uh, I think they call it the pin it button. You might have noticed uh, little pop-ups pop here and there that say, why not use the browser pin it button? Well, if you say yes to that, you'll get like a little button in your web browser that you can click that button to add a pin to add a picture to Pinterest even if you're not on Pinterest I don't have it here to show you exactly but the idea is if I'm on some website somewhere I could have a button to click to then add it to Pinterest again I'll show that in a moment let's do the easy way first here so um, on the top right corner I have this little plus sign Create pin, create add, save from site. So Pinterest has ads or boosted posts just like Facebook and every other network. I can create a pin on Pinterest and then boost it to reach more people, just like Facebook and such. We'll do the free method, of course, first. Um, create a pin. So clicking on that little plus on the top right corner, I can then click Create Pin, drag and drop, or click to upload. So if I've got a picture, if I've got a folder open somewhere with a picture, I can drag the picture into it, or I can click the little icon of the camera and then a, a window opens up for me to go find my picture. We don't have really many pictures we can work with especially for your business but I've got a few sort of like test pictures like sample pictures that you can borrow if you would like just to get through the whole process if you click on the camera here to upload on the left side we've got an area of pictures we've got some sample pictures on these computers that we can borrow when I open that, I see sample pictures. Now I got some pictures here. Now none of these relate to Victor's Bakery, so I'll just pick whatever. Pick tulips. So I'm about to upload into Pinterest a picture, let's say, of my product. We have website and description. They're both optional. I would say no, these are not optional. You definitely need these. Description, of course, because I, I have here a spot to write details about this picture. Um, I can write anything I want here, and this again helps me get found. At the top here, website optional. Again, no, that's not optional. If you've got a website, I want to put the address to my website so that people have a way to get back to my website. So when you upload a picture, be sure to add a description. And what do they call it? Website. A small paragraph with keywords about your picture. 
website a link to your website. I would not count those as optional. It is an extra little bit to do, and I would do it because it would help you um, in the long term. So I have maybe the link Victor's bakery.com that be that be fine <clears throat> you could have a home page link or a landing page link I think I've mentioned landing pages but uh, what what what's your definition what do you think a landing page is So a home page, the first page of your site, it's where, obviously, if I go to victorsbakery.com, that's the home page. That's the first thing I see. A landing page, by contrast, a screen on your website, people can only get via a certain link not the menu so what that means is if I've got Victor's Bakery up on the menu of my website I have home button contact button products button about button I've got those buttons on my home page to take me to the various screens of my website I might have a page that you can only get to if you follow a Pinterest link or a Twitter link or a YouTube link. That would be a landing page. So tangible examples are picturesbakery.com versus Bakery.com slash deal99.html. The only way to get to that link on my website is to have followed it from a tweet or a pin or a snap from Snapchat. It's a landing page. You land upon it only through a specific path. There is no deal99 link on the main menu. It's sort of then a hidden link purpose of a landing page purpose of a landing page and LP um, to track traffic from a source maybe I use the link deal 99 I, I only put that link on my tweets on Twitter so I can check my stats like Google Analytics and such I can check that I got seven hits on my website this month at deal 99 meaning seven people came from Twitter maybe I have deal 88 as another landing page and I only use that link on Pinterest maybe then I have deal 44 from Facebook the only way to get to those deal pages is via the social networks I can then check the the traffic stats, the, the analytics of my website, and it will then tell me how effective those links are um, from those networks. Can people who land on the landing page then go on to other parts of your site? Yes. Yep, they come to the deal page, but then there will still be the main links to go to shop or about or contact. <coughs> now, using the landing page is not foolproof because once, if someone knows to, even a little bit of the web browsing, if someone does go to that address, you know, victorsbakery.com deal99, um, someone came to that address from Twitter. Yeah, but if someone knows even just the basic amount of web browsing, they can then copy this link 
and then send it to seven of their friends via email. They didn't get the li they didn't get that link by following me on Twitter. A friend or a customer sent it to friends. Now I wouldn't really say that's good or bad, but that sort of just like muddies the data in terms of I only thought people would come from Twitter from that link. But it's the possibility that someone could further share the link and you won't really see the data that says it came from elsewhere besides that someone came to that link. So those are some things then uh, when you when you upload something to Pinterest. <clears throat> I said earlier about a tip long vertical images are recommended the best way to explain why is to is to actually show you I'm gonna cancel this um, I was about to upload it but I'm gonna cancel it and instead I'm going to Go look at if I click on the the home button. If I click on the home button, this takes me to maybe what Facebook would call the wall, the home screen. The home screen is where I'm seeing all of the um, pins of the accounts that I follow. So. I've followed some accounts. I see a bunch of stuff. Simply browsing. Here's a picture. It's vertical. It's not very tall. This one is vertical. <coughs> a little taller, a little longer. It has multiple pictures in one. And this one all by itself like this. It's sort of like for attention spans. This is like a short attention span photo. I might see it, then I move on. This one's a longer attention span. There's more in it. There's four photos in a sequence that perhaps caught my attention more than that simple one up here. This one also, a little bit tall and thin. It's one photo. It doesn't have to be a sequence always. But when I look at you know this shot of stuff here there's a little one here that I might not notice very much but then there's a taller one that takes up more space meaning more of my my eye line more to catch my attention scrolling down further so again here's another one here standing out this short one here, not so much, perhaps. This one over here is interesting. It's got the photo of the item and then the recipe, so it's a tall one also. Usually when I teach this, especially on Pinterest, I, I then make people hungry because all of these great jalapeno popper dogs. Mm -hmm. So um, just browsing, even with I'm not fully paying attention, but I'm browsing, I see things that are taller catch more attention because there's more to look at. Here's one here, how to cut a recipe in half. So this graphic here that um, has like a reference guide and here's one about uh, chicken Greek grilled chicken garlic parmesan cheese bombs okay try long vertical images reason you can get very creative catch more attention. There is literally more of a photo on screen so that 
it shows more. Types of photos. Basic. A very nice photo of one thing. Ed intermediate. A sequence of photos. Advanced. <coughs> A sequence plus text. The reason that I would categorize them this way is because, again, depending on our, in our skill in technology, I can take a photo of a really nice shot of my product and upload it. That's, that's the basic of it. Everyone can do that. The next level up is, well, how do I put three photos together? The answer is something like an app or Photoshop some extra software. Maybe your camera has it built in to put together a sequence of images. I don't know. It's your camera, it's your apps, it's your phone. I don't know. And this is more advanced because, again, I have to maybe if I'm doing the effort of let me show you before and after, or let me show you step one, two, three. So I have to shoot those photos. I have to create that thing before and after, or step one, two, three, so it's more time, more effort in addition to simply the, tech, the technical aspect of it, of taking three photos, four photos. And then advanced is that sequence plus some text, because also that, depending on your phone, your app, your camera, what features you have, um, you might be able to add text onto the image. And if it's going to be something very complex, like one of these that's also a recipe, well then I probably have to use Photoshop or some sort of graphic software to do this. Here's a photo. Technically, the photo is terrible. Uh, it's very pixelated. It's, you see all these weird dots. It looks low quality. But the important part, perhaps, is the actual recipe. Did I mention previously the website that I would recommend for, for free graphics editing? Mm -hmm. It starts with a P. Pixlr. Yes. Free web site to create graphics or edit graphics on photos. It's Pix Pixlr. Free website to download nice graphics. That one's Pixabay. So Pixlr to create photos, Pixlr to put them into the sequence, Pixlr to add the text, but Pixabay to go and find a photo of a tasty looking cupcake or, you know, whatever it makes sense for my, for my business. So I'm going to go back to adding a photo. If I click this time, save from website. Um, I have again uh, upload, or I have at the bottom, or link to your website to find an image. OK, the way this one works is uh, I'm going to get an example from from uh, our company's website, uh, we have a, a blog, um, articles, 
Um, we have articles, how-to articles. Okay, how to create a podcast. So this doesn't relate to Victor's Bakery, but let's say I wanted to use this. Um, I need a link from my website. Uh, here's here's a picture on the on the page. So and there's another picture. So I've got a link from my website. I can copy the link. So it's not necessarily the link to the image because what Pinterest will do is it will scan the page and find pictures and then you can choose the picture. So I need to provide it a link. I'm going to paste, copy and paste a link from my website into Pinterest. Pinterest will analyze that screen and see, okay, we found these graphics. Your logo, the graphic here, that graphic there. So you saw that photo of that microphone showed up there. I can choose one at a time these graphics to add to Pinterest. It will also know these are graphics you've previously uploaded to Pinterest. It keeps track of what has been saved from a website. Let's say I want to use that graphic. So you see what it did for me is it picked the graphic, what board do you want to put it into, and what description do you want to add below it. This isn't asking, put your web address. It'll automatically have the web address attached. That's one of the reasons why going this route, save from site, I kind of like that a little bit better because it automatically puts the link to your to back to your website. Whereas if you go to create pin, you have to remember and go out of your way to add the link back to your website. Save from website automatically attaches it. And adding a pin to Pinterest. Save from site. Let's see how do they how do they word it? Save from site. Well, automatically attach the link back to your site. So it's one less thing to do. So if I were to select this graphic, describe it, obviously for this case, Healthy Kids Recipes doesn't apply. Notice I can create a board on the fly too. Technology or your business. So right now I'm creating a brand new board related to technology. But notice how I'm wording it. Technology for your business. So again, an, an active voice. I can create it and save it at the same time. So I've added a brand new pin to Pinterest. I get a pop-up then, close this, see your pin, and then of course promote or boost, pay to reach more of an audience. So create a traffic campaign. What's the address you're trying to drive people to? It knows the address. I could change that, of course. What's my daily budget? Hmm. Suggesting $30. One thing that I don't like about Pinterest compared to Facebook is it doesn't 
kind of preview your effectiveness as well as Facebook. On Facebook, I saw that if I spent one dollar, I'm going to reach 200 people. You don't really get any preview like that at all about how much am I going to spend here, how much am I going to reach. I'll start with a dollar. Run continuously starting today, run for a specific duration, 30 days, target audience. Um, so try adding at least 10 keywords to help people find your promoted pin. This one's also, I don't, I don't think as powerful as Facebook at all. In that Facebook, we had the ability to target people via zip code and um, what are their interests. Here the closest is based on the keywords I type here. This is what people are interested in. When they create an account, they want to use Pinterest for food. So I start typing in food tips. Um, podcasting. I'm just putting random things here. So people that are interested in food might see this. This is saying, however, it's going to cost you $1.87 per click to reach people. Compared to Facebook, I really think the Pinterest is much more expensive than Facebook. So this is saying, if you're trying to reach these people, it's going to cost you $1.87 per click, $2, let's say. So if I'm spending $10, Two times ten, five. That seems to be then five people, five clicks. It's very opaque compared to Facebook. I don't know specifically exactly who it's going to. It is based on the keywords. I personally, however, have not used the Pinterest boosting enough to give you a really good opinion of it. But just from the screen right here, again, I, I don't see it as powerful and robust as Facebook. I've had a lot of experience with the Facebook one, and I see that that one is very detailed, very powerful, and good results. I haven't used this enough to really give you an opinion. So um, you can at least, you know. Is there a setup screen for this page? Because I'm not seeing the target audience option or the keywords option on my screen. Did you maybe scroll down? Okay, let me take it. social networks do is they they try different features for different people sometimes randomly this is what is known in the industry as a B testing they might be showing a version a to some people and a version B to other people the point of that is for them that the company or Pinterest itself to figure out which of these is more effective for people so um, I created a brand new account it's completely empty so I'm not sure why mine has that extra feature than yours. Um, yeah, something about Pinterest, they, they did it a little different for different people, perhaps. So because I only have one thing I've uploaded to Pinterest, the graphic up there automatically copies itself 40 times and it looks kind of weird. So as I add more pins, that'll change to have more content. If I look at my boards, well, I've got two boards. They look totally empty. So again, I can have as many boards as I want, but I would want to have enough of them so that a board doesn't look empty. And then for this graphic at the top, that's going to be based on what you've uploaded. So you want to upload content.
one of the ways that you can get um, traffic which applies to all the networks is search uh, so we've covered it here and there on the different networks that's covered again here see how it looks like on Pinterest uh, so going with uh, the notes here one way to get followers traffic is to search keywords and then interact with active people. We talked about that on Twitter, and um, it comes back again here. On Twitter, remember, I said, okay, I'm going to search cookies, and various people will be tweeting about cookies. Therefore, if I, if I then follow a person tweeting about cookies, or like their tweet about cookies, or whatever I make them act I make them aware of that I exist I give them a notification Victor's Bakery liked your tweet Victor's Bakery followed you well that's on Twitter and that's very similar here on Pinterest I have alerts here on on the network as well people will get a little notification on this bell Victor's Bakery followed you Victor's Bakery liked your pin I'm making them aware that I exist They're aware that I exist by um, by being active like this. You will make them aware that you exist to then take an action like your pin, comment on your pin follow you so on that search box at the very top of uh, Pinterest if you click on it one time recent searches if you've typed anything recently trending ideas these are things that people are searching for at the moment for Victor's Bakery, none of these might really apply to me. But if any of these do apply to my business, I could follow the link. For example, Instant Pot Recipes. So Instant Pots are hot now, I guess. And so I'm looking here at a bunch of recipes. None of these are, you know, baking recipes. But I see a bunch of content where then I can... Uh, the point of this is then I click on a pin and it tells me, well, who uploaded this? Adventures of a Nurse. Let's see what else. Something else. Baked Potatoes. Ashley, the Recipe Rebel, uploaded this. They wrote some text. They have a link back to their site. I can save this pin. Then they will get alerted that says, Victor's Bakery liked your pin. Now they know I exist. Um, I can follow the, the recipe rebel and they will get the alert. Victor's Bakery followed you. So again, they'll know I exist. Right now with a brand new account, no one knows I exist. Instant Pot Cinnamon Rolls from scratch. So Aileen Cooks. You can save it. can comment some of them have um, try tried it that's just another way to make people aware that I exist so tip on Pinterest as well as all networks search identify interact search a topic identify potential followers interact with them like reply follow this increases your chances 
of you getting the same. Of me being found. Of me being interacted with. A like, a follow, etc. And the more followers I build, the more potential customers. But remember, there was a very low percentage of what then your followers become as actual real followers. Does anyone remember that? It was very low, 1%. So I have 100 followers. That doesn't mean I'm going to make 100 sales. I'm not going to make 100 call. Then I'm not going to get 100 calls from potential customers. I have 100 followers, but then studies show really then 1% of those that, actually, that follow you will actually follow through in terms of something real. It's great that I've got 100 people looking at me on Pinterest, but I'm not selling anything. Well, what's 1% of 100? One real customer. Okay, well, I need to build more followers. I'm going to get to 1,000 followers. So what's 1% 1 of 1,000? 10. So this is why I'm trying to build followers on all of the networks. Now, this is, of course, the worst case scenario, although it's a realistic one, 1%. 1 you might have much better luck with your particular audience, your particular product, and I've got somewhere more like 10% of my followers are real customers. Well, that's great. Maybe 20%, well, that's amazing. People that are like at 50% and higher, like that, that's pretty, pretty, pretty rare. Because think about it in terms of the real world also. Followers in the real world are those who see my billboard, those that listen to my radio ad. But how many of those will actually then go through and call me? from my radio ad. Again, very low. 1%, 2%, 5% if you're great. But it's a, it's, it's a numbers game. Try to build up your numbers to then result in actual um, results. And as we look at the different networks and see this from different perspectives, we'll keep talking about different ways to get followers. But they kind of keep coming up over and over. giant instant pot pancakes so I clicked on that because of the picture the text very enticing so again look at the competition look at what other people are doing and a lot of these photos look like wow that looks like a professional photographer did that and some of them not so much but as you look at other people's photos, hopefully then subconsciously, but I want to tell you consciously, look at those other photos, see what they did, and you can do the same. You don't need a high-end camera. Look at the idea for this one right here. That's just a photo of a bunch of potatoes in a skillet on a table. Okay, the table is wood, so that gives already like a rustic type of vibe. These are, I don't know, uh, like fingerling potatoes, whatever these are called. And it's very close. A lot of times people think, well, I, I, I'm going to, my product is right here, and I'm going to stand over here. Well, that's going to get a photo of the background and this thing and that thing and everything distracting. Um, one big tip for photography is just get closer. Do you need to show end to end every piece of the plate? Probably not. Look at how this one is. Well, that's completely cut off. Uh, some of that corn is completely cut off. Well, that was on purpose. That was to catch your attention, guide you over here to the name of the product, and then over here, look at a huge close-up, very sharp focus close-up of then butter on the on the cob with text and stuff. That's an advanced photo, definitely, but not an impossible one to do. This one here, it really is all up to the food. Now they obviously place those two pieces of pineapple perfectly on, on the ham, 
but that's just me getting close with my camera to the product. Tips on photography. Just about any camera works, even your cell phone. But always use a lot of light. I'm trying to take a photo of this product right here. And I'm going to place it right here. Um, our eyes are better than any kind of camera because our, our, our eyes adjust instantly to the light. The camera's is not as powerful. Um, I've got these lights turned off in the room here to not give glare to the screen. So there's some light that I could further be using to take a good photo. Once I turn that on, I get more light on the product. That would be better to take the photo. I have it off again for the glare. I could go near a window. I could take my product and go by a window, especially maybe a south-facing window where there's light coming from the sun. And if I'm near the, the, you know, the light source uh, out here, that's going to be brighter photo onto my, I mean, uh, more light onto my photo for a brighter photo. So always use a lot of light. Window light. Or turn on more lights. Never flash. Flash is almost always terrible. Now they are getting better, but it's almost always terrible because, for example, I've got a flash on my camera, of course. And I'm going to stand right here. I'm going to take a photo. These are getting better at like calibrating the color of light. But they still don't fix the problem with, here's going to be a huge burst of light on the product right here. It's going to overexpose it. It's going to wash it out. It's going to cause weird shadows. So flash is almost never going to work um, for most of us. So you want some sort of natural light. If if you need to use a flash because things are too dark, well, that's the problem. Things are too dark. Okay, if you got it bright enough, but flash you still think you need, consider a tripod. They make tripod adapters for phones. You use your, your classic tripod that you've had forever in the closet, and then you buy this little adapter that attaches to any phone, and then that screws into the tripod. So then your phone is on a tripod right there, perfectly mounted, perfectly stable, put it in close to the product, instead of me trying to hold the camera here and then my hands are moving. And then get close. So that one here again, you see every kernel of corn. And most of these photos that are going to stand out as you browse any of these social networks are often going to be close-ups, because you see the product very well. So especially for food photography. There's a few more. Okay, there's the kid's hand. Um, close up on that. Then, yes, there's an artistic background, things out of focus and all of that. That's more advanced. Uh, but just look at the, the photos. Okay, here's a great example of a terrible photo. Strawberry Pop-Tart Pie. It looks like a bloody mess. <laughs> It would have probably been better to do a close-up of it, maybe at a lower angle. Not going vertical doesn't always work. Maybe at this kind of angle like that. And then of course it's all subjective. Uh, would you say this is a good or bad photo right here? Why? Exactly, you're all right. 
it's maybe a little too dark. This is getting too dark. Now it's also dark on my projector. It looks okay on the monitor, but um, yeah, it's a little too dark. The contrast is weird. I don't really see any textures here. It's not advertising, maybe number one, especially for food. So, uh, you know the saying, I don't know art, but I know what I don't like. Mm -hmm. So uh, just, you know, look, browse around and see what you do like. Mandarin pumpkins. That's fun. So just get advice over here. So you're going to see a lot of these vertical photos. You can do those. Is this a good photo? No. Why? <laughs> Maybe the main thing is not appetizing. The lighting, the lighting looks okay. I see the product. For aesthetically, I think these lines look really weird, especially this one curved like that, kind of. It just looks like a horror movie. Yeah. So. Even the chocolate chip oatmeal looks better than that. Huh. That, that looks amazing, actually. Yeah. Uh, so the could be the angle too. Okay, is that a is that a good or bad photo there? That looks good. It looks good. It's shot with uh, uh, the light looks good. It's another vertical sort of pose. They did a little artistic flourish of the parsley right there. Maybe, but maybe I don't think it looks appetizing. You never really can get chilly looking that appetizing unless you're really careful. So, at least, yeah. I kind of don't like that there's so much fat on the edge of the pot. <laughs> That's subjective. Okay, so you can look at these and analyze them and then uh, get ideas about how on your own you can uh, make your own types of photos. Uh, like something like this. Is this a good photo right here? My dad would say it's a bad photo. It's out of focus <laughs> Because he really doesn't like photos that have any artistic blurring in them. He thinks well that was a mistake It wasn't in focus <laughs> yeah. So where you want your the viewer to focus you probably made that out of focus on purpose So your eyes would have to focus on what was in the skillet and that's what I tell him, and he still doesn't believe me. <laughs> that's exactly the purpose. You make a focus on a photo to guide attention. You don't need to have those forks in focus. You can tell this is a dinner scene, whatever. It's there artistically to focus you here. Maybe that could be a little more out of focus. But yeah, for some people, then it's like it should all be perfectly focused and clear. And that's not wrong. It's just an aesthetic choice. So as we wind down the lecture for today, this is again the idea that um, all of these networks, they have uniqueness to them. They have their own terminology. They have their own interfaces. But they all have ideas that happen over and over. You create content. You are active in it. You uh, get inspiration from other accounts, maybe some do's and don'ts for you to then do a good job. And for a lot of this photography, uh, it's not a lot of effort to do a good photo, but the big idea is close-ups and light. Terrible light on that. What's up with this empty space here? It should have been cropped at this point where we see above it. More light, a little closer. I cannot tell at all what that product is there. Pressure cooker beef and broccoli. Well, you pressure cooked the flavor out of it. And there it is. So, final questions uh, for today's lecture?